the first tilt of balance, reign of Bahadur Shah from 1707 to 1712, in the era covered by political unrest and deep-rooted factionalism. Bahadur Shah I, the eldest son of Aurangzeb, ascended to the Mughal throne, promising a return to peace and a revival of the empire's fortunes. However, the world around him was evolving faster than he could manage. Born as Muazzam in 1643, Bahadur Shah's early years were spent under the watchful eyes of his father, Aurangzeb. His mature years were marked by a series of revolts against his father, only to be reconciled later. It was challenging for the future emperor as he navigated the labyrinthine politics of the Mughal Empire. Taking the throne in 1707, after Aurangzeb's death, Bahadur Shah reign was immediately marked by the challenges of uniting a fractured empire. Age 63, when he ascended, he faced rebellions, notably by his own kin, seeking to claim parts of the empire. Recognizing the need to conciliate rather than confront, he adopted policies of reconciliation. He sought to mend the strained relations with the Rajputs, Marathas and Sikh, a departure from his father's rigorous policies. Notably, he released Guru Gobind Singh's youngest sons and met with the Guru, making a thaw in Mughal-Sikh relations. However, his reign also saw the aggressive ascendancy of Sayyid brothers, kingmakers in their own right, who would come to wield immense influence in the subsequent reigns. Encounter with the British While Bahadur Shah I was preoccupied with stabilizing his rule internally, the British East India Company was silently solidifying its position in the Indian subcontinent. Traders were slowly beginning to exert political influence, especially in the Bengal region. The emperor, while recognizing the economic significance of the Europeans, might have overlooked their political ambitions, an oversight that would have profound implications for his successors. Bahadur Shah's reign, lasting only five years, was a period of transition for the Mughal Empire. While he made laudable efforts to mend the sectarian divisions and pursued a more inclusive rule, the empire's decay had already set in, a process initiated during the latter part of Aurangzeb's reign. Under Bahadur Shah I, the Mughal Empire was still reeling from the expensive campaigns of Aurangzeb. Meanwhile, British operating through the East Indian Company had already been steadily expanding their presence in the South and the West with cities like Madras and Calcutta becoming major centers of British influence. They sought more trading privileges and an eager to please Bahadur Shah granted several rights, not fully realizing the political leverage he was ceding. This period also saw the British focus on fortifying their settlements, particularly in Bengal, preparing for the future where they might need to assert their military strength. His death in 1712 marked not just the end of his reign, but also a further splintering of the empire as fractions weighed for control, creating a power vacuum that external players, notably the British, would exploit in years to come. Jahandar Shah ascended the Mughal throne in 1712 after his father, Bahadur Shah I, passed away. His reign, however, was brief and marked by a tense political intrigue. Coming to power with the support of the powerful noble Zulfiqar Khan, Jahandar Shah's rule faced challenges from the start, especially from his own relatives seeking the throne. Internally, the Mughal court was rifled with decadence and corruption, with Jahandar Shah being heavily influenced by his favorite mistress, Lal Kamar, who was notorious for her exuberant lifestyle. These internal weaknesses were compounded by the external pressure of rising regional powers and the expanding influence of the British East India Company, which was slowly but steadily establishing its presence in India. 
Jahandar Shah's inability to consolidate power or effectively address the empire's challenges led to his eventual downfall. He was defeated in the battle by his nephew, Farukh Shiar, and was subsequently captured and executed in 1713, bringing an end to his short-lived reign, the rapid turnover of rulers during this period, further highlight the declining strength and stability of the once majestic Mughal Empire. The Puppet Emperor in the Shadow of King Maker Amidst the rapidly crumbling edifice of the Mughal Empire, Farukh Siyar, a young and ambitious prince, ascended the throne, but ambition alone wasn't enough to navigate the treacherous waters of Mughal politics, especially when real power lay elsewhere. Born in 1685, Farukh Siyar was the grandson of Bahadur Shah I. From a young age, he exhibited a fiery ambition to ascend the throne, perhaps in an attempt to restore the former glory of the Mughal Empire. His rise to power in 1713, however, was not solely due to his own efforts. The Sayyid brothers, powerful kingmakers who led significant sway in the Mughal court, played a pivotal role in placing him on the throne after orchestrating the downfall of his predecessor. This support came at a price. The Sayyid brothers held the true reins of power during Farukh Shiar's reign, making significant decisions on his behalf and essentially reducing the emperor to a puppet figure. Despite his limited power, Farukh Shiar did make some administrative changes. He attempted to reconcile with six and even tried to curtail the influence of the Sayyid brothers. However, his lack of real authority and political acumen made it difficult for him to implement substantial reforms. His attempts to diminish the power of the Sayyid brothers, coupled with his ineffectual rule, ultimately led to his downfall. In 1719, after nearly six years on the throne, he was imprisoned, blinded, and eventually killed on the orders of very king makers who had once been his patrons. Farukh Siyar's legacy is that of an emperor who tried, yet lacked the authority and strategic foresight to stem the rapid decline of the Mughal Empire. His reign stands as a stark reminder of the battles of the shared power and the impending doom that awaited the once mighty Mughal Empire. The era of Fakhru Shiyar was a turning point in terms of British influence in the Indian subcontinent. The British East Indian Company received the notorious Firman Royal Decree, granting them the right to reside and trade in Bengal. This was a privilege. They didn't have to pay regular taxes for giving them a substantial edge over the local traders. This decree would play a foundational role in the company's economic and subsequently political dominance in the region. The reign of Rafiul Darjat and Shah Jahan II were brief and tumultuous periods in Mughal history. Both emperors were figureheads installed by the powerful Sayyid brothers who wielded real power behind the throne. Rafiul Darjat ascended to the throne in February 1719 after the assassination of his cousin, Fakhru Shiyar, he was only 19 years old and had no experience of government. The Sayyid brothers quickly took control of the administration and reduced Rafiul Darjat to a puppet. He died just three months later, either of tuberculosis or poisoning. Shah Jahan II, Rafiul Darjat's older brother, succeeded him to the throne. He was only a puppet of the Sayyid brothers kept him closely confined to the Red Fort. He died after a reign of just three months, also of tuberculosis or poison. The reign of Rafiul Darjat and Shah Jahan II were marked by political instability and economic decline. The Mughal Empire was in a state of decay. The Sayyid brothers were more interested in enriching themselves than in governing effectively. Despite their short reign, Rafiul Darjat and Shah Jahan II are remembered as tragic figures who were exploited by Sayyid brothers. 
They were both young men with the potential to be a good rulers, but they were never given the chance to prove themselves. Muhammad Shah, the cultural beacon amidst political chaos. At the time when the Mughal Empire was facing existential threats from both within and outside, a ruler emerged, not as a formidable warrior, but a patron of arts and culture. Muhammad Shah's reign was an unexpected blossom of culture in an era of decline. Born in 1702, Muhammad Shah, often referred to as Rangila, which means the colorful, ascended the Mughal throne in 1719 after the tumultuous and short-lived reign of his predecessors. His rule was characterized less by political and military might more by a rich cultural and artistic legacy. Muhammad Shah's court became a magnet of artistics, poets and musicians. The imperial city of Delhi saw a resurgence of musical forms, with the emperor himself being an adept musician and a lover of the arts. Under his patronage, classical music forms, particularly the Khayal genre, flourished. Painting too, saw a revival as the Mughal miniature form his era remains celebrated to this day. However, the emperor's keen interest in the arts often drew criticism, as many believed he neglected the pressing political and military issues facing the empire. While he engaged in cultural pursuits, regional power grew stronger and the empire's borders shrank. One of the most defining moments of Muhammad Shah's reign was the invasion of the Persian ruler Nadir Shah in 1739. The infamous sacking of Delhi led to an immense plunder with the peacock throne and the Kohinoor diamond being taken to Persia. This event not only weakened the Mughal Empire's prestige but also severely depleted its coffers. Muhammad Shah's reign ended in 1748 but its impact lingered on. Though politically, the empire was on a downfall spiral. Culturally, it was a golden era. Muhammad Shah's patronage ensured that the arts thrived, even if the empire did not. The long, slow and complex decline of the Mughal Empire was not the work of a single ruler or a single enemy, but internal failures, strategic miscalculations and the sinister methodical progression of an external power that was the British East India Company.